Hey everyone, welcome to Archland. We have here Zelvinath. We're gonna be discussing her build, how to build her, how to mix and match her traits, how to use her, um, what what she is good, you know, how where she is good at, and all of those things. We'll start off with her strengths, guys, and weakness. As you can see here, they're rated from A up to S. So S being the highest, so more or less her strength would be uh, magic defense, also physical defense, surprisingly. Um, not all assassins do have this um, strength, and also physical attack is going to be her strength. Her major weakness, though, would come in her HP, as all assassins do. So, again, self-explanatory, very, you know, very straightforward. If you could tweak these stats, then you're going to be fine. Next up is going to be her unique passive here. So unique passive is, um, it's going to read the translation that I have here in my other screen. Um, the return of the night, it's what it's called, ignores enemy escort skills when attacking, which is nice, especially if you're trying to finish off um, somebody or someone or a hero that is crucial to um, the enemy's uh, lineup. So, um, ignore escort, increase all stats excluding HP by 4, 5, 6, 7% depending on the rank for each enemy within 2, 2, 2, and 3 tiles. And uh, this is capped from 12% to 21%, which is nice. Obtain dark skills after using a skill. Dark scales um, increases damage resistance by 50, which is nice, which is rare for an assassin. This effect can activate every 3, 3, 3, and 2 turns. Effect can be, can't be dispelled and it gets removed um, after taking damage. Okay, can't be dispelled and automatically wears off. Okay, so that is her unique passive. My thoughts on this, um, again, a very unique unique passive to have um especially that it gives her um damage resistance for an assassin so that's rare pretty much so again very nice to have as well and the escort skill the ignore escort skill is actually crucial for assassins so let's move on to her traits okay so trait wise we're gonna start with the top both sets both up and down will serve its purpose depending on your build we're going first with the top um section so this one is remove um have a random debuff attached to an enemy after you deal damage that is simply it this one however is interesting it's going to give them armor shred up to four enemies within three tiles so this one is interesting because not all armor shreds are, um, you know, it's usually a linear. This one, it's going to be within her surrounding. So this is nice. And this is up to four um, enemies. This one, if you plan to use her as a support, this is going to be useful. Um, I did take the top row, but more or less, I won't be using this. Um, could be in a support role. I built her as an attacker role, which I will um, show with you guys later. Next up is the bottom row. This one is deal 1.5 physical attack to a single target. If the enemy is defeated, deal fixed damage equal to point two physical attack to all enemies within two tiles. This one is nice to have. Uh, my concern is um, that enemies still has to be dead for you to deal actually small person is 0.2 times damage so or otherwise recover own hp by 50 percent of the damage done so definitely nice to have but i don't see for me basically i don't see i i don't think i'll be using this um again the kicker here is difficult to to do unless um, she really deals that much damage. And uh, the other one here, this is the other passive. So there are no allies within two tiles. 
increased physical attack and physical defense. This one, she's going to be a lone wolf with this one because of the wolf icon. So again, um, that, those are your skills for top and bottom. I'll I'll uh, discuss later why I chose the top portion of uh, what they call this of um, these trees. So moving on to the middle skill. We'll start off with this passive here. This is a one point passive. So at the end of action, there's an if there's an enemy with less than 20 HP within two tiles deals fixed damage equal to again 0.2 physical attack to all enemies. This one, there's a chance that you could use this um, based on the HP your enemy has. And the point two times is actually just suited to lesser hp enemies that is why i'm keeping this i'm going to use this with my zelvinoth and um, this if i can be active once per turn as well so next up the middle one which is called no no definition here but this is the middle skill so it's called your gale ambush okay deals 1.2 damage physical damage to a single target increase damage of the skill by 20 percent uh for each tile you move through before attacking max is 60. this is actually very very nice as an assassin because it gives you more damage to stack as you move closer to your enemies uh, I'll have more comments actually later for Zelvinath on our kit. So this one I will use. This one I will use. The first passive. And um, the last skill here. This is a bit long. So deal 0 0.6. So this one. Zero. It's a Dragon of Darkness. I'm not sure what, what the name is. But 0 0.6 physical attack damage to all enemies in range. So within self. Um. It deals 20% more damage to mages at the end of action gain. Return of the dead for one turn. So if you have both return of the dead, these are two effects and dark skills. Effects on self at the same time, they combine into dark knight dragon for one turn. So dark skills is increased damage resistance. So this gives you increased damage resistance. Can Effect can't be dispelled and it gets removed after taking damage. And the other one is return of death. Deal fixed damage, uh, again, of 0.2%. All enemies within two tiles when obtaining and losing the buff. Okay, so Dragon Knight, if you combine both, increase damage resistance by 80 and 0.2 zero, uh, damage again to all enemies within two tiles, obtaining and losing the debuff. Effect can be, tr can be dispelled, can't be dispelled, and it gets removed after taking damage. So, this one I will definitely use because this you will have this will be charging while you are actually using this and using this okay so you got that guys okay in terms of summary we um i i think we have explained all of the skills here so far and um my take on her is that whichever you know trait you get if you want to get if you want to get the 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 upper part this one can be used for support. The bottom part can be used for damage dealing, especially this one and this one. So again, depends on you and how you're going to build her. Preferably, I'm going to build her with an attack composition with mostly the middle. But but let's go to this one. So this is the these are the skills that I used. So if I want to do a support role you can actually use this because these this one seals the skill so for seal the passive skills are disabled if you want to disable something which is support then you can use this also this one is also used for support because it inflicts armor shred with this is going to be a passive so this is within the tiles that she's in okay so uh, the support is more on giving enemies negative effects and the rest of the skills are on attack. That is why I chose the upper part because she will be flexible enough if, even if I don't choose the bottom um, tree that I mentioned a while ago. So that is her traits, guys. So hopefully you'll be able to decide whether you're going to go with attack or support role 
for Zelvinath. But but again, ideally she's going to be on attack mode. Let this one is very important. This one is also important. This is her last skill and the passive as well is nice to have for her kit. Okay, so next up is going to be her rune. Her rune is very self-explanatory. Um, wanted to ensure that she has critical attack, a uh, crit sorry, critical rate, because she's an assassin. And uh, for assassins, I normally use battle access, even if they're in a support role, because this one is um, has damage resistance and. Uh, Okay, when, when actively attacking during battle, damage resistance is 10, and physical penetration is also part of this uh, this effect for the rune, for the battle axe. So, this set is going to be good um, for an assassin, for her as well. I used Monstrous Wolf uh, because of crit rate. You may also use um, the gladiator for crit rate it doesn't really matter you're only after the crit rate here so if you don't have much gladiator definitely go with uh monstrous wolf okay so off to the unique equipment here okay so here is uh ssr tanathos so it adds physical attack and HP. Active. This is the act. The activation when worn by Zelvi. Increase damage and crit rate by ten. By sorry, by one percent for every tile you move through before attacking up to five tiles. So this actually lines up with one of her um um active skill. And at the end of the action, under dark scales and or dark knights dragon, which aligns with. Her final skill, inflict a random debuff to all enemies within 2,000, which is not bad. It's, um, it supports her kit and it supports the build that I have right now. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, go to hero experience and let's see how she is actually played. Okay, guys, so we have Zelvinath here, or Zelvi. So we're just going to move um, towards this guy here. Um, if I attack, that is the damage. If I do this, no, that's not the one. That that is for the mages here at the back. So let's. Uh, there you go. So that big of a damage. Let's take out this guy here. This skill is the one that um gains her life, and for that little HP that she has, she has a passive that deals. You know. Um, I think 0 0.2 physical attack. So it comes in handy in cleaning up, um, you know, cleaning up enemies that you don't really want there, but have little life. So this one, this is her final skill to the right. This is in the middle. So this one deals more damage to mages. So technically you could do a killing spree with, uh, if you have mage, uh, enemies on the other side. So. That is just it. So, stage cleared. So, hopefully you have an understanding and appreciation how she should be used. And we're going to be off to my final thoughts. Okay, so for Zelvi, um, final thoughts. Um, if you have Michael already, Zelvi is, is somehow of the same role as Michael, but of the opposite. She gives more of a debuff rather than michael uh, michael gives um buffs so they're the opposite they have they can fill the same role they can be an assassin they can go you know further and they can fly they can ignore terrain again it's the it, it, it depends on your preference whether you're going to be using zelvinath or michael uh michael again gives buffs to allies for she she gives debuffs to enemies and again i'm not saying that they're totally the opposite but again if you have michael you don't need to get zelvinath but if you like her more and how she's used then go for her i don't think um you're gonna be having a problem with her she is um either gonna be your support assassin or she's going to really be an assassin but again you could also have half support half Attack assassin build for Zelvinath. Same with Michael as as what I did. So, 
that is it guys comment down in the comment section do you think that uh, zelvinath is worth no you know uh investing in and most of you i think have someone already for her um so that is her build so if you compare michael and her who would you prefer also comment down in the comment section so thank you guys for staying this far take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out of here